Does Turgoy Palatine Fasta anatomy feel as confusing as its spelling? Does it seem to have as many openings as letters in its name? Today we are going to talk on the Turgoy Palatine Fasta and its opening on the CV Studio Imaging. I'm going to show the easy way to remember the entrance to the Turgoy Palatine Fasta. I'm Farida and this is The Dental Radiology. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back. To the lateral side behind the zygomatic process is the infratemporal fossa, the space below the temporal bone. I'm going to zoom up. If you look through, you can see the trigomaxillary fissure. This is a fissure between the posterior part of the maxilla and the lateral trigoid plates. If I get rid of the zygomatic process, you can see the fissure. This is one of the outside entrance to the trigoid palatine fossa. The trigoid palatine fossa is a crossroad between the skull base and the extra cranial. There are four main regions that meet here. The skull base itself, posteriorly the nasal cavity, medially the infratemporal fossa laterally, and the orbit that is anteriorly. Let's make it more simple. You can think of the trigger potting fossa as a room with four doors. Or I can say four hallways that are meeting together to the trigger potting fossa room. The back hallway would be the skull base, and the lateral would be the infratemporal fossa, medial the nasal cavity, and anterior we would have the orbit. So to remember each hallway that is entering towards the trigopalatine fossa, think about what lies around the trigopalatine fossa. The brain is posteriorly, so the posterior door opens to the cranial nerves. The medially is the nose, so the medial door opens to the nasal cavity. The anterior is the eye, so the anterior door goes to the orbit. And the lateral door is towards the temporal bone or the temporalis muscle. Now we're going to name each of the doors that are leading us towards this room, the trigger passing fossa room. The name of each door, or I can say the opening, tells us where they go. So starting from the medial, we have the sphenoid palatine foramen that goes medially towards the sphenoid sinus. We have the door that is named the infraorbital fissure that goes towards the orbit. We have the trigoid maxillary fissure that we talked about it that goes laterally. So the maxillary sinus will be in the lateral. And in the back, we have the Rotundum that is for a cranial nerve that goes towards the brain. Let's start with the medial and lateral openings. Sphenoid palatine foramen and trigon maxillary fissure can be seen when the walls of the posterior of the maxillary sinus and the trigon plates are parallel. They look like two round openings of a cylinder, with the cylinder being the trigon palatine fossa itself. Their names tell you which side of the cylinder they are. The sphenoid palatine foramen opens in the direction of the sphenoid body or the sphenoid sinus, so it's medially opening since these structures are medial. The trigoid maxillary fissure opens towards the maxillary sinus, which stretches out laterally towards the zygomatic arc, so the trigoid maxillary fissure is the lateral opening. You can remember it like this. In Old Navy, the port side of the ship was the side that docked along the port. So it was the side that dealt with the outside world. The triggered Muxley Fisher starts with P. Well, the P is not pronounced, but it's spelled. So it is the port side, the side that is towards the world outside of the patient. It is laterally. And also, we have a starboard side, the part of the ship that is away from the port. The sphenoid palatine starts with S, so it is the starboard or the side that is 
in the inside world of the patient, it would be the medial side. So going towards the posterior door, the posterior door has two parts. The more superior part of the foramen is the more superior part is the rotunda foramen. It looks like a cylinder going straight back. I remember rotunda is the posterior door because both rotunda and rare start with R. So the superior part is the rotunda foramen. The lower half of the posterior door is the trigoid or median canal. I remember the median is the lower opening in the posterior door because the V almost looks like an arrow pointing down. Unlike the rotundum that looks like a cylinder straight going back, the median has a bit of curve to it going towards lateral, looking a little bit like the letter L. This helps me to remember that the median connects to the lateral from it. So in this axial view, the median canal is kind of an L shape and the median goes to the lateral from it. So we are now in the anterior door. The anterior door is the inferior orbital fissure. You can remember this because the eye is anterior to the trigoid palatine fossa. So for remembering the inferior orbital fissure name, starting with the letters i o and f we can remember it as i opening is forward but it's a little bit more complicated than that well the inferior orbital is anterior it is also a little bit superior more like an anterior skylight than a door so if you look through the rotunda or the median door if you look from the posterior doors, you can see the inferior orbital fissure in the front of you on the ceiling. I think this sagittal view can help you out. Something that is a little bit tricky in this truly palatin fossa room, there is a trap door in the floor, and they are the palatine canals. We have the greater palatine canal that is in the medial and the lesser palatine canal that is laterally and it's kind of a bit smaller so for remembering that the greater and lesser palatine canals are in the floor or their trap doors you can remember that these canals are going towards the palate or towards the mouth and the mouth is down so for connecting the trigger palatine fossa towards the palate we need a hole that is going down so we have the greater and lesser palatine canals so let's see this sagittal view again that is the view from the side you can see how the inferior orbital fissure is like a skylight of the room with the rotunda door that is in the back and the palatine canals that are the trap doors like a ladder that are leading the trigger palatine fossa towards the mouth so for remembering this, from the lateral side of the skull, if we are the trigoid muxley fissure and we are looking towards the medial, in the medial we have the sphenoid palatine foramen, in the back we have the rotunda foramen, and in the lower half we have the median canal. In the bottom that was the trap door, we have the greater and lesser palatine canals that were going towards the mouth and in the for the skylight we had the inferior orbital fissure so we have seven openings toward the trigoid palatine fossa and don't forget that we were the number seven the trigoid maxillae fissure so now you know the basic anatomy of the trigoid palatine fossa. Don't be afraid of the doors of the trigoid palatine fossa. They can open the world of anatomy to you. There are many doors in this world. Don't be afraid to look them through. Don't miss us out on our next videos. Learn more by subscribing and turning on that notification bell. Comment below any questions and experience.